I am so psyched to have Frida Wolf on today. Welcome. Hello, thank you for having me. This is, like I said on Twitter, this is the only crossover Loba and Sombra will ever have, so enjoy. <laughs> you, you didn't start as a voice actor. You, uh, you worked as a video game developer for 12 years. Yeah, in, in 2001, it was like the, the World of Warcraft prior to World of Warcraft. It was, at the time, the biggest uh, MMO on the planet. And long story short, I, uh, they had their first fanfare, which was the equivalent of, again, before Blizzard, before BlizzCon of a fan gathering. And um, they had some organizational hiccups and I just did what I do where I got on the forum and I was very loud and I organized and I told people to be here, there and everywhere. And someone from Sony online approached me and offered me a job as a game master, which is customer service. Back in my day, um, in the early 2000s, um, there weren't college programs for game design. Um, the Art Institute of Phoenix was the very first school that had a program for game art. Um, and that was in like the mid 2000s, like this shit didn't exist. If you wanted to get into games, you um, got on the ground floor and you did one of three ways as um, Q and A quality assurance tester, a customer service person like me as a game master um, or a technical support person. And then eventually someone gave you an opportunity to get into game design. That is how you did it. And I just happened to get in at 18. So I spent two and a half years um, in customer service, one year as a, a VP's assistant where he was like, my, my only problem with is I don't know what to do with you because clearly you're being wasted um, doing expense reports and faxes. And then, and then finally at that time, they only opened an audio department because EverQuest 2 at the time was the most ambitious VO project to date, which in hindsight is adorable because uh, they were like, we're going to have 100,000 lines of dialogue, which if you look at the stats of any Game Theft Auto, that is cute. But at the time, like there are to this day voice actors, um, casting directors who still have trauma from the, um, like casting directors had to get in the booth to do voices because they maxed out all the voices that utility actors were doing in town to, yeah, it was that crazy. That's so me. crazy. Right, and because of that, they opened up an opportunity in the audio department. They needed someone just to implement VO because they couldn't keep up. So I applied and I got it. And after like two years of that, they let me, again, you did it from the inside without any degrees because the schools didn't exist. Um, there was like Full Sail University and like Vancouver Film School, but again, like money, money, money. Um, and they just let me do it from the inside being mentored by a lead sound designer. So I became a sound designer. Um, so I was a sound designer for nine years of my career and then the, the climbing up for three years. And I did that till I was 30. And then I Holy got fired. Holy cow. Yeah. Uh, I have a cute question. Someone asked if you could do a Loba impression. The answer to that is she, she doesn't do an impression. She'll just do Loba because uh, te technically, I guess, could you try and do an impression that's not really Loba as Loba? That would be funny. <laughs> like you don't nail it. That's just bad voice or that's just like, a gun is like a beautiful woman. Hold her tight or someone else will. Voice acting is easy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, could you could you say how Loba really talks? Because I'm very I, I want it for my personal enjoyment. Something, enjoyment. Something I should say for voice actors, which you're probably familiar with. So certain game companies have gotten very testy about voice actors not repeating game lines, but saying things in in established character voices and saying like either saucy or expl expletive or basically things that could make the character or the company look bad. And like that reverberated in the industry to the point where like my agents threatened me with like, if I ever catch you recording, saying or doing anything oh. as a character, you are fired, you are out of this agency because it's a liability. Uh. So, so just like FYI, I will never say like, happy birthday as a character because I don't want to get fired from the game. I, Respawn is like the most lax chill company about that, which is why some of the actors are in Cameo. I would not trust all game companies to be that relaxed about it. But anyway, Egon is like a beautiful woman. Hold her tight or someone else will. The funny thing about Loba is I'm kind of obnoxious in sessions. You can ask Respawn because she she kind of writes herself and she's yeah. so like, ever, like, it's very, because I'm a nasty person, it's immediately like double entendre, super sexual, just like, she's amazed, just immediately very juicy. See, that's not out of context. I probably won't get fired for that. Um, but like, yeah. I just start going off the rails and like adding on lines and nonsense because yeah. I can't help myself because she's like very fun. And the the main direction I get in the booth is like, um, Frida, can you just less, can you, can you pull back? You're just, you're just pointing out a loot crate. You're just pointing out a box. 
Don't have to be sexy. Pull it back, which is really funny. I'm a man eater and a lady killer. I enjoy the variety. She says that. That's a great voice line. They established from the go that this woman is voracious and and is not genitalia discriminate. It's also like um, kudos to Respawn for for having a diverse because diversity is so hot right now. A diverse cast of characters and a diverse um, actor cast. It is perfect. Like, it's bizarre happenstance. Of, like, I happen to be bisexual and Loeb is bisexual and that we're both named Wolf. But this was not planned. The, it was not, this was not a box that they ticked and been like, by the way, in the casting world, so what do you prefer? What kind of, what kind of person do you like to eat? This was not a thing. This was not a thing. So it's like, it's nice to have representation, but I should say like, it was not part of casting. So again, just like happy, happy coincidence, happy stance. But it is cool that like, I have played characters in the past where, it is hinted that someone is like either, if not bisexual, just sort of like open to suggestion, but never yeah. explicit. This is the most, no, I am absolutely into this uh, character I think I've ever played, other than just like specifically um, gay lesbian characters. But then like, especially if it's written by a white guy, lesbianism becomes her whole identity and she's not about anything else. And it's very like one dimensional and kind of sad. And then you end up like, kind of hinging on stereotypes. Can you can you talk about the code name that she had or is that not allowed? People are asking. I don't remember. I don't okay. even remember. I mean like Apex Apex and Respawn have their shit so tight that I think on average when I'm recording stuff it's for something that's being released like 6 to 10 months later. Yeah. The Loba was recorded I don't know a year or a year and a half before she was released because they're just so organized. That team, to my knowledge, doesn't crunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They just it's it. They have their business plan is just so there's so much oxygen in it. It's just like really rare, especially having been internal because um, at least like they're at the point where it's like games as a service. So like World of Warcraft or anything that's been around for a long time, your pipeline is set. Don't mess with the formula. You know about how long it's going to take to build a new character from scratch and record the VO and then go back for a pickup. Like you know. After when did you start recording? When was she launched? And how often have you come right. back in? I I think I got cast almost almost a full year after the original launch. So, you know, they, they hammered out all the stuff about how long it was going to take to do X, Y, Z. So by the time it got to me, they were just so chill and so organized. And like that energy also came into the sessions. It's it's very, it's very LA for me to be like, it's just the vibe, you know, but it is like, if, if you're working with a team that's really stressed out, that kind of feeds into like how the sessions go. And then you, and then you can tell the scripts were written at like three, four in the morning and it's kind of a mess. And then we have pickups later, which is great. It's more money for me with more sessions, but like, it's very high anxiety versus like Respawn and Apex are consistently just very chill. Do you play? No, I tried, I tried at the beginning, like before launch uh, or before Loba came out, I, I got dumped in a map that was like mostly empty and it took me like forever to find other people. I think I need, I think I need to hop in multiplayer and play with someone I know who's telling me what to do. Um, I, the majority of like my gaming background at the gamer uh, was with multiplayer games. Yeah. Um, but it helped, it does help to be yelled at. I don't, I don't like <laughs> See, that is anxiety inducing to me. I don't want that. They're going to yell at you anyway, especially in a multiplayer. They're, you know, any, yeah. opportunity, like, unless you have chat turned off, you're going to see and hear it all. Do you follow the, like the, the ships and stuff? And did you hear that she was friend zoned by Bangalore? What's the deal? Like, do you follow these things or are you like, ah, let it be? Or do you, are, are there some ships that you love? You can't not because if, if it wasn't recorded, you get tagged in the fan art. So you see exactly what's happening with like, with the fan, where the fans are at. Um, uh, well, look, I want everyone to smoosh just so everyone can be happy and leave me alone. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think it's, I think obviously I think it's cool when people are so invested in characters that don't exist, right? To like, be like, I just want them to kiss and be happy forever. Well, that's, that's nice. That's a nice sentiment. Um, do you mind saying a few voice lines that won't get you in trouble and I can try doing them because they love listening to that? Oh, I'm a man eater and a lady killer. I enjoy the variety. I'm a man eater and a lady killer. I enjoy the variety. I don't, I was just thinking like, I don't technically do anything special with the placement. It's just like, very, like if you're a couple whiskeys in or something, or a couple tequilas in or something, you're like, I'm just very relaxed right now. You know, like whatever, like whatever your jacuzzi voice is, that's probably Loba.
My jacuzzi voice. Okay, let's see. I'm a man eater and a lady killer. I enjoy the variety. Right. Like I got to. I got to pick up on the on the nuances of the accent. Give me another one. Uh, this is me making fun of my mother and like throwing in some salmon there. Yes, I love that though. That's you know we all of our characters come from somewhere. You got blood on my shoes. You got blood on my shoes. I feel like if you just picture yourself just like hanging back in a jacuzzi with your, you know, your margarita or whatever, and it's been a couple hours, you're like, mm, whatever that is. Do you mind if I give you some sombra voice lines and you try no, to do your best do. impression? Again, okay. this is our only crossover. Hit it. This is our only crossover, guys. Uh, <laughs> everything can be hacked and everyone. Everything can be hacked and everyone for sexual purposes. See, like that, that kind of just like... Mess with the best and die like the rest. Oh, hackers. Love hackers. Mess with the best. Die like the rest. In yeah, baby. Bed. Anyway. <laughs> in my bed. Anyway. What's your yeah. favorite Loba skin? They're all really cool, dude. Her, the one that she has, she has a hacker one that sort of looks like Sombra that I think is like purple lavender based where um, she's got like the, what year is it? the mid the mid 2010s like undercut with like the long because I've had that haircut and um every time I see it I'm just like oh I want it again but I'm trying to like this is the longest there is one that's super similar to Sombra holy cow yeah it's she's they love doing this like collar thing and I feel like the Latinos always have purple Reina and Valorant is also purple Frida is there anything you'd like to leave our fabulous chat with Thank you so much for hanging out and asking questions and supporting Latinas, playing Latina characters in video games. It's still kind of a big deal. And, you know, just like with like movies and stuff, if you believe in support, let people know, let creators know, because if, if, if you don't hear it from fans, it doesn't matter if they hear it from the creative community. If they don't hear it from fans, they think it's all for nothing and it doesn't make an impact. And you know what? Representation matters. You know yes. it, we know it, but they need to hear it forever. So yes. keep that pressure on because it's working. So we both thank you. It also means more job for all of us. And then inherently actual BIPOC people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like it's just a win-win. It's a, trust me, even if you don't think you like diversity, you like diversity it keeps it from getting boring. So Absolutely. thank you so much for, thank you for having me. It's so nice to finally meet you. I hope so I know. meet you like in the real world. I'll, I'll wear pants and everything. My ultimate is apagando las luces. Can we do that to end? It goes apagando las luces. Cute. Ready? Uno, dos, tres. Apagando las luces. Adios. Guys, she's so sexy. She's going to take my job. Guys, you're amazing. Keep booming and booping. Boop.